going back to the era of Pac-Man, I wanted to talk about a couple of games from that era. And now, you know, most of these games were best known in the arcade. I don't have arcade machines here, but I do have an Atari 2600. And I wanted to talk about some of the, the games, some of my favorites from this era of gaming. I feel like you know, stuff like Pac-Man, Space Invaders kind of falls by the wayside. They're games of an older generation that don't necessarily have, you know, the graphics or the gameplay hooks that later generation games had. I think there's still some great games in there, some of which aren't that popular or like even weren't as big at the time that pe or games that were big at the time that people kind of forgotten about. So I want to take a couple of minutes to talk about some of those games off the top. Every time we go to the arcade, there's an arcade in Toronto called Tilt, and they specialize in retro machines, and one of my favorite ones to play, and I enjoy playing this on the Atari as well, Missile Command. Missile Command is a game where you are controlling, like, missile bases on Earth, and UFOs are shooting missiles from the sky. You need to intercept the missiles with, um, you know, by shooting your own. You have a limited number of missiles and you use a trackball to um, control the cursor. And so you're moving around the trackball. You're hitting the button to shoot the arrows, like the missiles and the, the actual tracking of both the incoming missiles and your missiles are kind of slow. So you kind of have to shoot it in the right spot so that it blows up on contact with the other missile it's a very cool game i like playing it a lot and it's a very cool one to check out i think you like this is available everywhere in some shape or form missile command oh i'm holding the cartridge upside down missile command and in case anyone's wondering at the time when i bought this in like 2005 or something uh i got this cartridge for oh come on focus focus for two dollars you can't really see it two dollars and 99 cents 2.99 don't they have pac-man for atari yes they do and it's really bad <laughs> ian says connection is still spotty so i'm gonna duck out unfortunately hope the rest of the stream goes well thank you ian for dropping by tell des i said hello and i hope she has an awesome stream too we'll probably drop by des's stream if she still she usually finishes later than me so we'll make sure to drop by take care Another one of my favorite games to play of that era, whether it's in the arcade or on the Atari 2600, this game is crazy ahead of its time. This is a battle zone. And what's cool about this game, it's one of the first first person perspective games. And it's also a game that's played with that has like vector graphics. It's lines and they use the lines to create the 3D landscape and the mountains in the back and the enemy tanks and you're moving around in 3D space and shooting tanks. Now, I get in the world where you're playing Call of Duty Warzone with over 100 people with realistic graphics picking up multiple guns, this is going to look crazy archaic and basic. But compared to the other games at the time, this game was insanely cool and I think it's still fun to play now. Battlezone. Speaking of tank games, if you had an Atari 2600, you definitely played combat. Now, I don't know. If it it doesn't look like much. It's soup. There's no art on the box and you can see there's numbers on it. So you actually had to set the number on the console to play different modes, but you could play. It was pretty much like 1v1 with tanks or planes or other vehicles, different modes and it's still a great game. It's very simplistic in nature, but be moving around in space and trying to shoot your friends, uh, a lot of fun here. Way before your Pac-Man 99s and War Zones, it was combat and it was a lot of fun. Two more games, two more games. This one's a personal favorite of mine. I don't think that many people talk about it. I know that at the time when I bought this game, like I'd never heard of this game before, but I was really impressed when I played it and was like, hey, these graphics are actually pretty cool. And this is a lot of fun to play. This is Chopper Command. This is an Activision game. So yeah, long before they were making Call of Duty, they were making Chopper Command, which is a 2D shooter, kind of like, you know, Defender, where you're on a 2D plane and the planes go, the helicopter's going back and forth and you're shooting like other airplanes and targets on the ground. 
Uh, this one's another very cool game, very fluid for the time. And again, this one is another uh, 2 dollars joint as well. <laughs> and the last one, how could we talk about the Atari 2600 without talking about this game? Oh, this one was, this one was expensive. The big bucks right here. E.T. on the Atari 2600. Many hail this as being the worst video game of all time and i mean it's a hard how do you quantify worst at this point like there are buggier games but when you talk about games that had expectations going in games that sold millions of copies uh games where millions of copies ended up buried in a landfill because they were so bad that players returned the games and didn't want them um games that almost sank the entire industry of video games uh et's right up there and there's a documentary about the making of this game, and it's a very fascinating watch. You do get a little more of an understanding of why this game turned out so poorly. And I will say, having played this multiple times, it's horrible. And probably the worst game I've ever played. Not saying the worst game in the entire universe, but of the games I've played, this is easily the worst one I've played. <laughs> Dizliz says, I remember learning about the E.T. game. It's really bad. You walk around in this sort of like a Legend of Zelda type perspective and you're E.T. E and you constantly fall into holes and then your energy goes down to zero and then you're dead and you're like, what was I supposed to do? And the whole point of the game is you're supposed to collect, pe you're supposed to fall into some of the holes to find the pieces of your phone so that you can call home and go home. It's not clear at all in the game. I don't have an instruction manual. And even without that context, it's still just you're walking around, you fall in the holes, you float out of the holes, you fall back in the holes, and it's it's not fun. 